Welcome back, y'all. I know it's been a minute. I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And we're Two Aprons. Today we have tahini dress, chicken, and kale. With pickled peppers and roasted sweet potatoes. So yummy, so yummy. So today we have a preheat situation, so we're going to preheat the oven to 450 degrees, so I'm going to do that very first. Look, I did a thing. Can I have a trophy? Oh, no, yeah. trophy. no trophy. No, no there's there. probably one for you somewhere. No, trophies. The, um, I think that's good. As the name insisted, not insisted, what's the word I'm looking for? Implied. Implied tahini. Ooh, yum. Tahini is one of my favorite condiments. Here's our uh, spice blend. So our spice blend tonight is um, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, and dried whole parsley. A little bit of soy sauce. Some regular mm. soy sauce there for you. Ooh. These little dudes. These are Peruvian pickled peppers. Hence the pickled peppers in the title. I just put a little bit of soy sauce in there, but it's alright, it all gets mixed together anyhow. So, yeah, exactly. This is all getting mixed together, but this is mayo with a little soy sauce filled in it, and also on the bowl. <laughs> this guy, I bet y'all know what that is. We have a lemon. Ooh, a lemon. A sweet potato. One sweet potato. And the almighty kale. And as you know, first thing we do is we wash our veggies. So I'm now gonna wash the veggies. And if I'm not mistaken, that is what's called dinosaur kale. Um, and another lifetime I worked at a health food store and I believe that is what we sold as dinosaur kale. Correct me in the comments below if I'm mistaken. I like that, dinosaur kale. That sounds fancy and It kind of looks part. like the scales of a dinosaur. It does. If you look at it. I suppose you could also call it dragon kale. Ooh. If you were so inclined. I like dragon kale. <laughs> right. Now, they do that just for a look. Is that a marketing thing? Is that a brand name? Like a specific farm or something? I have no idea to any of those questions. I told you, in another lifetime, I worked at a health food store. That's what our dinosaur kale looked like. Tell us in the comments. <laughs> One of the things I like to do is I've learned that this makes it juicier. So we roll this a little prior. So it's Ooh. kind of like muddling something for a drink. It just oh, releases yeah. the juices inside. And so you're going to get more out when you do eventually cut it, it open. It is just like that. Put our box off to the side, our box of awesomeness. Mm -hmm. Wash we go. Pretty much that guy. And now here's a knife. All right. This guy just gets quartered. And de-seeded. Yeah, and these seated. Oh. And that is kind of important because you don't want um, your significant other or a guest or whomever chopping down into seeds when they yes. were not aware there was anything they needed to look out for. It's not the most fun. Oh, there are a lot of seeds in this lemon. I've noticed the better it is, usually the more seeds there are. I don't know if there's science to that or if it's because they're organic or some such. Um, but if you know, tell us in the comments. Yeah, that's interesting. I've kind of noticed yeah. the same thing though. I always feel like like the more organic or fresh produce I mm -hmm. buy, the more seeds it has. So I think it's just fertile. It's a healthier <laughs> thing. Healthier things tend to reproduce uh, more than unhealthy things. Just by and large, if you watch the Discovery Channel. If you watch Idiocracy, kind of the opposite seems true, but sure. I think <laughs> when it comes to nature versus people, the opposite tends to be true. <laughs> um, so what, what is good for animals in nature is tends to be the exact opposite for us. So that is a good observation. <laughs> Y'all need to watch Idiocracy. That's your homework for tonight. Watch Idiocracy. If you haven't seen it, if you have seen it, just watch it again. And you just say, yeah, you're right. Boom, boom. All right, these look like they're good to go. They're relatively de -seated. And like the little half seeds and like kind of the yeah. little brown seeds, those are not like a big deal. It's the large seeds that like you know if you bite down yeah. on that, you're gonna feel it. That's really what you want to get out there. The next thing we do is the sweet potato. We just small dice this, don't we? Yes, we're just gonna dice that. It might be a medium dice. I'm gonna double check. Yeah, double check that. Medium dice, yeah. The sweet Ooh. potato because we're gonna roast it, and so you really don't want your pieces to get too too small. Um. If you're really familiar with your oven, if you're really familiar with the temperatures and stuff, it's not going to matter as much because you're kind of going to know the time based on the size of the dice. Um, so if you accidentally dice it too small, you know you just leave it in less time. But a medium dice, that was extremely barbaric. That was We exactly. needed another knife. It was not wow. working out. Impressive. Um, anyway, a medium dice is going to be left on probably about the amount of time that the recipe says because that's what it calls for. And then if you like large dice it because you just feel like it that night, you know you're probably going to leave it on a little longer. 
So, so this is medium, guys? Yes. Is exactly. that the verdict? Yeah. This one is medium. I just felt the need to go through all of them. So. I like it. Yeah, the knife was not doing it. It was not doing it. Probably. I like been how fine, you but... just like cleavered that, though. Like... I was like, there's no room for mistakes. <laughs> that was impressive. This is Sparta. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of. <laughs> So Gerald Davis is kind of chopping it up into, you know, the pieces that are medium or like however big he thinks they should be. He tends to like his vegetables a little overdone, like a little more I on do. the blackened side. And I'm good with that too. Like I find those to be really delicious. So we might cut ours a little smaller um, to be able to leave them in the same amount of time and get them a little more done. Yeah, um, that's exactly what I do. You do you, like, you know, figure out what you think medium is and play with that. But for the most part, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Let me chop this one down a little bit, but throw these guys, the nubs, away. Maybe right. that one is kind of big, like right there. You might have that. There you go. Um, Kitty, do you want to show them the special kale way? To, cause pretty much oh, now gonna, I get to do that? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I so, thought oh, you were going to do that. Pretty much should got to show you. Well, I feel like I did every all the other you stuff. Did. I don't want to leave you, you out. Did. Show you how to do this in an easy way. So the way that we've watched tutorials um, that have said to do it is you want to, and I'm going to get this started a little bit, um, but you just want to run your hands down oh. and it kind of just strips right off the stem. That's actually different than how I do it and that's better. <laughs> now there might be a little bit left up here. It just depends mm -hmm. on how tough that is, um, but that's still less to like try and have to pull out than the entire So thing. you start from the bad end or the little end? I start from the little end. It's, the little end. It's this end. No, the little. The bad end. I'm calling this the fat end, and this the little end. Ah, okay. So you want to start which yeah, end? Yeah, I'm literally describing it the opposite, so start at this end. All right. <laughs> so how did you do it? You grab it like that, and you just pull it through? That's what I did, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I didn't and know And then you might want to take off a little more at the top, just depending on, you oh, know. Oh, because there is Because it can be a little bit tough there, too, so but saying. it still saves a lot of time. It does. Okay, here, I'll help you with these. Thanks. We'll bust this out. The oven's about preheated, and next we're going to put our potatoes on. Do you know what goes on the potatoes? Is it oil, salt, and pepper? Per, or do we put some of our spice blend on there? Um, I'm going to guess that we put the spice blend on the chicken. I bet you're right. I bet you're right. But I will double check that for sure. No, I'll look right oh, now. Okay, I will super. consult the documentation. The, um, so we've chopped our things, separate the kale. That. Oh, the next will be the garlic. Which is sitting up here. We did not pull that out. Oh, we didn't. You guys will need garlic. That's but another thing. It. Let me uh, show this into the camera real quick. Garlic. Woohoo! Boom, and we'll do that after the kale. This recipe actually calls for two cloves, but we're gonna do like one really giant one and a couple of smaller ones because mm -hmm. we really love garlic. And we, we really love garlic. Almost always use like a bunch. Way more than the rest. And it's of healthy. Before. It is. It helps your immune system. At least that's the hippie rumor that I have heard. It's supposed to be super good for like fighting colds and stuff like that. So the internet says it's good for uh, something. I don't know. Oh, the internet says it. I know. And we know. should all just you know fall right in line, huh? It's what I do, except the internet doesn't have a concise voice no more. They keep saying left, right, left, right. They don't ever just pick a direction. Damn interwebs. <laughs> so we're about done with the kale here. We are. And once we get that done, we're probably going to season the potatoes. And you checked, and the seasoning does go on the chicken, correct? No, um, I think I got it because I forgot about the garlic. Um, I'll start doing the garlic if you want to check about that. Okay, absolutely. I discovered another thing while looking for another thing and forgot the last thing. And here we are back to this thing. Uh, and so garlic is our next up. Um, half of it you'll rough chop, and the other half you'll turn into a paste which is pretty easy to do. You just chop it a whole, whole bunch. So the potato seasoning is just salt and pepper. Oh, okay. And olive oil, obviously. Then we'll go ahead and put that on the sheet just to kind of free up the board. And our oven is preheated. And it's also like your root vegetables and stuff. It's going to take longer to cook them. So you kind of want to get them in earlier. Like I think these are like 17 to 19 minutes. It's uh, 19 to 21 minutes. Oh, my bad. Okay, 19 to 21, to 21 minutes. minutes. And we'll probably leave them in that full 21 minutes and then maybe even a little longer just depending on how they look. A little bit of olive oil. Just a drizzle. That was It's that always was a just big a drizzle. drizzle. But <laughs> and some pepper. <laughs> Salt and pepper. I like pepper, pepper, yum yum. 
salt and pepper always makes me think of the skating rink back in like yeah, way yeah. back in the day like way back in the day boom then i kind of just mix them all around just like a little school dance remember school remember dances yeah that was a long time ago there Those we of go. you who were lucky enough to have school dances. There we go. Boom. <laughs> Going in the box. The hot box. The creator right. of delicious. So we're going to set a timer for those. It's already set to 21 minutes. We're going to hit start on I'm that. I'm going to wash my hands. David is going to get that taken care of. And I'm going to start working on the garlic here. That is going to go in our spaghetti sauce, which is probably the next thing we're doing. This garlic is actually sprouted. Um, oh, you want new garlic? I have better garlic. No, I was just going to say it doesn't really matter, but if you want to do different garlic, we can. No, it doesn't matter. Or do, whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? I would have to look it up, but like personally, I have not noticed very much difference between sprouted garlic and non-sprouted garlic. Tell us in the comments if that matters, <laughs> if that makes a difference. I won't read about that seasoning, though, in the chicken. I want to say it sprouted to garlic is supposed to be like less potent than regular mm. garlic. But I could be wrong on that. So the next thing we're going to do, and while she does that, I'll get started on this. Um, but we're going to whisk together the, the tahini, mayonnaise, the juice of two lemon wedges, two tablespoons of water, soy sauce, and as much of the garlic paste as I like, which is a lot. <laughs> so we have the tahini, boom pow. We have the soy sauce, wham, that was easy. Look at me, I'm a pro. Did it say the mayonnaise? I believe it did, yes. Boom. I'm gonna Mayonnaise. Need to oh, yep, yep. There you go. Mayonnaise. Let me get the spoon out. The utensil, the tool. Oh, we have whisks too now. We're like so professional now. We're we getting got, like, fancy. And everything. I know we don't getting just use fancy. forks. By the way, if you ever don't have a whisk, a fork makes a really good replacement. And we have gone years without a whisk and using a fork. So. We have. Well, you need so much stuff when you have a home and an apartment that it's intimidating to buy it all at once. It's just so much. And so I kind of want to see what I come and do organically, especially with like housewarming gifts and stuff like that, before you go buy a bunch of stuff. And if you're kind of interested in like um, our the cookware that we have going on in the background, we do use only stainless steel. Um, yeah. We don't ever use nonstick. We don't want to worry about scraping up stuff. Yeah, um, that stuff flakes really easily. And Real especially easily. if you're using like spatulas, that are not on thick metal spatulas and that sort of thing. So we only use stainless steel. And if you keep a lookout, especially around um, Good Friday, all right, no, not Good Friday, um, the Friday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Yeah, Black Friday. Um, there are some really good stainless steel like sets you can get yeah. that have all of your basic stuff that you would need to cook on a daily basis. Um, and they're, you know, 80 to 60 to 80 dollars. So. Definitely keep an eye out for sales. Big department stores tend to have them a lot. Um, that's a really good place to find that kind of stuff. And I would always recommend stainless steel because the other stuff is just so care intensive. And I'm not about that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you gotta really, and then everything has to be that plastic that melts and you can't I just had bad luck sponges with sponges and you can't like, no. Just yeah, like, stainless steel for us. Store. And pretty much where we got that from, is we just peeked in some of our favorite restaurants and saw what they were using. And I was like, they do this all the time. This is what they use. There's gotta be a reason to it. Um, and there was. It's easier, it's more durable, it lasts longer, you don't replace it as much. It's awesome. All right, let's see if I put everything in this it needs. So I did the tahini, did the mayonnaise, did the soy sauce, the juice, two lemon wedges, two tablespoons of water. I did one tablespoon of water, because I don't like it super thin. Um, so this is ready. Pretty much once we do the garlic paste, yeah, sometimes the um, the sauces and stuff, you might want to start with about half the water and then see where you want it, depending on the thickness you like. And your oven. Some yeah. Ovens, I think, cook it off water. The stove tops, when you're like trying to thin something, like trying to get something to thicken, trying to get the water to evaporate and stuff, it can take a lot longer than like the anticipated time. So you might want to start with less water and just kind of go from there. You can always add more. That's the easy thing. I'm just kind of put my own little chop in there just so mm -hmm. I can get some choppy time in. But one of the things I did that's a little bit different too, um, and she probably did this already, um, but I like to smash them when it's to the paste. I actually didn't do that. Kind of smash them down, get them off the knife, and that helps make it a little bit more like a paste without Easy. having to, yeah, without having to 
uh, use a planer or anything like that. So this way, I'm all about having less stuff because sometimes you just don't have a lot of space. Maybe you're in a fancy flat in New York. Maybe you're in a, a studio. Yep, whatever. Who knows your situation? Maybe you're in a boat somewhere, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's about using what you have to do what you want to do. And, and we actually recently watched um, a tiny house show that took mm -hmm. place on a boat. So <laughs> that yes. was really interesting. And we've kind of been mildly obsessed with that ever since. And it's just about using what you have mm -hmm. and uh, seeing how far you can take it, which is it's pretty far. So this guy's ready. I think it's time to prep the, uh, the chicken. Okay. Super. Let's look at that. So when it's time to cook the uh, chicken, we're going to end up putting it in a pan with a drizzle of olive oil. I'm going to go ahead and set that up. Just a drizzle. It's always just a drizzle. Oops. I dropped the thingy. Got to have the thingy. Man down. It likes having the thingy. So Boom. here I have... Boom. What am I looking at? Chicken? Yeah. <laughs> All natural. I was looking for the cut. Oh, here we go. Oh, Boneless. Boom. Skinless chicken breast. Yes. Yay. Oh, we give you two paper towels. Of course. So since this is tahini dressed chicken and kale, this is where the chicken comes in. Um, so we're just going to get this ready. And basically it is just our spice blend, which again is onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and dried whole parsley. Um, and we're just going to put that on the chicken once we've dried it off with some salt and pepper. We're going to do both sides. So we're going to do one side, put it down in our warmed pan and then do the other side once we put it down so that when we flip it, both sides have been seasoned. Mm -hmm. And it should be really good. This is actually one of our favorite spice blends. It is, all right, coming through the ickiness, 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 ickiness. Oops, oops. Go ahead and pat that try. You want a pre-rinse? Uh, nah. Okay. Not too bad. Sometimes it's a lot of ickiness oh. and you might want a pre-rinse. We do want to turn the uh, stove top on though. We go Absolutely. ahead and have that, have the oil start heating up. Do it in the one I had it on though, please. So the camera can see it better. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's yeah. There you go. Boom. We're trying to have things prepped a little bit easy. Um, if you'll tilt that handle away so my belly doesn't just push it where it wants it. There we go. Um, uh, just like that. <laughs> you so mean we, like you just did? Mm -hmm. I did that as a demonstration purposes. That was that was a good job. Mm -hmm. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. Uh, um, boom boom. Here's these guys. Now we still have to let this heat up a little bit, but we can go ahead and do our seasoning yeah, for salt and absolutely. pepper. Absolutely. And uh, spice blend. Do you remember what's in the spice blend? This uh, mm -hmm. kind of go around. Absolutely. It's onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and whole dried parsley. Did y'all notice my uh, meowica shirt? It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Google that. It's awesome. So I always do a lot of pepper, um, just because I love really highly seasoned. Um, meat and I'm not big on salt so pepper really gives things a lot of flavor mm -hmm. for me so I will sit there and like grind some pepper and be totally mm -hmm. fine with the time that that takes we've got our spice blend over here that we're gonna get on there boom and I'll rub it into you once you yeah I'll rub it in magic hands magic hands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're just gonna use about half of this on one side mm -hmm. or as much as you want just kind of to coat you don't have to like don't try to cover every space because this is yeah. one of our favorite spice blends, though, so it's really good. It is. So we do use it liberally. We do. Kind of rub this in. A little massage yeah. action. <laughs> Day at the spa. Lucky, lucky chicken. Mm -hmm. Boom. All right. We'll do that side. Okay. I think that's still going to take a little bit because we just had it on. Yeah, that's still super not liquidy. So. <laughs> All right. So now we have the right eye on. <laughs> Which is going to make that get liquidy faster. But we'll go ahead and season this side while we're waiting on Again, that. why it helps to have partners. Can kind of do your thing. Two sets of eyes, y'all. There we go. I threw her off when I didn't use that other eye like we typically do, but I was like, hey, this eye, you can see the camera. Usually we use the other eye because we're also boiling water. This one doesn't have that. Tell us about the tahini, though. I know I saw you Googling and getting <laughs> fancy. Captain uh, Try Hard over here. Uh huh, that would be me. So um, when I was researching, like tahini was kind of the most interesting ingredient I found in the meal today. Um, so I wanted to know more about it. Um, I was first introduced to tahini in baba ganoush. Which, baba ganoush. That's fun to say. Baba ganoush. It is fun to say. It's also fun to eat. It's really delicious. Um, so it's a mashed cooked eggplant dip made with tahini, olive oil, typically lemon juice, and then other spices. Ooh, and yummy. yes, and so when I was looking it up, um, tahini is actually a condiment, um, considered a condiment, and it's made from toasted 
hold sesame. Ooh, hold um, ground, sesame. Ground, toasted hold and ground sesame. And so that is what tahini consists of, and I absolutely love it. I love sesame oil, too. Everything sesame, yes. like, sign me up. Yeah. Sesame Street was one of my favorites when I was a kid. Like, I'm yeah. all down. <laughs> I like that, man. I like that. Oh, so we'll do the uh, spice blend here, too. Oh, yep. Spice blend there. And spice that is blend. coming along, so that would indicate the correct eye is now on. Because yeah. I was like, usually it takes, like, a minute or two. And I was like, that's pretty non-responsive. We've got to check in. Yeah, here. that it was really thick, like, when we looked at that, so... Yummy, yummy in our tummies. All right, I'll massage this side in. Okay. Boom. If you want to put that yeah. over here by the dirty dishes, I'll Absolutely. get to that. I'm going to move so I don't block you there. I think this is pretty close if you want to swish it around and yep. we'll see. Absolutely. Definitely getting there. I'm just going to make sure that our whole surface mm -hmm. is completely covered because that'll just help prevent any sort of sticking. It will. And that's getting there. Yeah, make sure it's all covered. Pal, you got it. Sometimes there's always that one little island spot that's like, never me, resist, it is. resist. And you know how satisfying it is like when you were really little, yeah. if you're my age and you're watching the VCR had gone off, but you're watching the screensaver bounce and the like one in a million times it would actually hit directly in the corner and you like <laughs> felt like life was worth it. Like, let me know if you know what I'm talking about in the comments below, but that was a thing. <laughs> that sounds like you had computer lab. And it was boring. No, I just no one to goof I off with. I grew up working in a kindergarten, so there were a uh, lot of VHS tapes played while we were waiting for kid parents to pick kids up. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna throw these guys on. Do it. Um, because I believe we're in the ballpark of the time. Uh, so we do this uh, seven minutes per side. Yes, it's gonna be seven minutes, and so I am going to grab my phone. So after you massage in your spice blend, we're now gonna add it to our sizzling skillet. What time are we putting this on? Okay, so we're going to put this on for seven minutes on both sides. So set that timer. That timer is going. If you will, do some soap on Absolutely. here and stuff so I can do my washings. I'm going to turn that on for your pre-run yeah. as well as soap. Thank you. All of the stuff and things is now so Awesome. And David will get everything super clean while we get that chicken cooking. Wash your hands for the inordinate amount of time that we can now do. Which I have heard you can sing a verse of Jolene, because um, you know we're here in Nashville. Yep. You can sing the happy birthday song, like there are lots of things, but generally you want to go about 20 seconds. Personally, I count one 1,000, and I do it to about 30 just to make sure that I'm covered. I like that. I like that. That's fancy. <laughs> what do you I like do? Jolene, though. I like Jolene. <laughs> I don't know if I know That's what I the figured. whole song correctly, but I think I do. I'm not even entirely sure I know the chorus, which is the only reason I don't use that one, because I'm also a huge fan of Dolly Parton. I'm mean, like, who isn't? That is true. She deserves a statue. Several statues. She probably has a couple already. Awesome. All right, now that's going. We're in a good spot. So both sides of our chicken have been seasoned. One side is down cooking. We'll flip that in just a few minutes here when our timers go off. I'd say we are ready for... Cooktails? Cooktails! Yes. I like cooktails. Not only is it a good time filler, but it's delicious. I think we're done with these guys, so I'm gonna wash them up. And it's fun for learning. I always learn things when we do cooktails. Well, you're always learning, period. <laughs> I a so. learner, which is good, I guess. It is. Oh, I love how you say that with so much, like, <laughs> sadness in your voice. I guess that's good. I know, I know. We have three components to our drinks tonight, not including ice, because theoretically ice should be in there. We'll probably use silicone cubes, because... Oh, no, no, we'll use, uh, not silicone, we'll see, I'll show you. Oh, we're going to use something cool, apparently. We will, we will. All right, so we'll get out some glasses here. Yeah, get the big ones. Do we have bigger ones? No, I guess, oh, wait, wait, uh, no, I guess that is it. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. it, I guess that's it. Those are the big ones. So, we have... Um, two glasses here. Yummy, yummy. And oh, we'll do them in the order. Oh, Hello. yes. I'm sorry. Because it pretty much, if I remember, it's three parts this, two parts this, one part this. Easy. Oh, and when there's an orange, we use for garnish. That's very true. Um, and also, actually, it's more than garnish. Some of it goes in there. That's true. It does. So this, this, and this are just for those of you who may not be able to read it from home. Prosecco, Aperol, and Club soda. How do you say that? Apple what? Apple. Oh, that's fancy. It's that's, like the end. Okay, Italian. So <laughs> it is, it's Italian. Um, it was invented by two brothers in northern Italy in the early 1900s. 
It is actually made from rhubarb, so I'm like super excited mm. to like try this and drink it. I like that because rhubarb. I like the concept of rhubarb without potentially ever having actually tasted it. Um, and then this drink that we're making is actually called a spritz veneziano, or just typically referred to as a spritz, and it's used as an aperitif in Northeast Italy. And aperitif is something that's served before a meal to stimulate the appetite. Oh, I like that. So I've learned all of these things nice. today just from this one cocktail, and I'm super excited to try it. Um, also, when I was researching, I was looking up the difference between Prosecco and, Ooh. ooh that is the timer for the, for chicken? the chicken, yes. Flip your chicken! And so, um, chicken at this point, good. Yeah. yeah, at this point I like to lower the heat a little bit from four to uh, three, or I don't know what yours is, from uh, high, medium to medium, medium. And again, both sides of our chi chicken are seasoned. There's oil in the pan, it is not dry, so. Yes. And I'm gonna cover it. I keep some of the moisture in there and it helps. These are really thick pieces of meat, so it helps really get in there. Absolutely. The, um, so, Kitty's gonna show us the proper safe way to pop your cork. <laughs> um, thank you for that intro. I have actually had this go horribly wrong in the past. I literally popped it one time and almost took someone's eye out. Um, <laughs> or took their head off. <laughs> oh, thank you, garçon. Garçon. That's not Italian, though, so I'm not in no, the name, but still. <laughs> I don't speak Italian. Hand me your, uh, so. your bits, boom. And if you could peel that off of me. Yeah, boom, boom. <laughs> getting weird. It's getting weird. What the freak? <laughs> Thank you. I'm, it, I'm very lovable. It did not yes. work like So when you are opening the um, tie mm -hmm. on here, you always want to point it away from people. And yeah, away that way, yeah. <laughs> and away from whatever artwork may be on the walls. Mm -hmm. Or at least um, the expensive stuff. And then the way I do this that I have found to be easiest and uh, the least likely to decapitate someone is to just put a towel over it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, what am I not doing? Um, put a towel over it and then pop oh, it with the towel. Oh, look at that. So it doesn't fly into artwork. Mm. This is our potatoes, and it doesn't oh. fly into anyone's head either. We'll check on the potatoes. See and how they're coming. You've got your cork. Your cork cannot be reused in a Ooh. champagne bottle. Boom. Ooh. Nice golden brown. And I burn my edges because I like them like that. We Sometimes like that. I'll do it even uh, a lot worse. <laughs> a lot worse. We'll keep it photogenic. But it always tastes good, so I will give it um, up. Yeah, I like it. This is the way I roll. That's how I roll. Always tastes good. All right, so we we're back to this. So the way this guy goes down, this they say is best served cold. And they mean cold. So you keep these in the fridge, get them nice and cold. Now I have these. If you want to put the epidol in the freezer, you can for a little while. It is not high enough alcohol content that you can leave it there. Okay, That's it's gonna right. it's gonna get weird if you leave it in there. It's not vodka. It's only an 11% ABV. So you want to maybe put it in the fr freezer for a little while to get cold, and then switch it to the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I have special things. Ooh, fancy. Fancy ice to keep it. Very fancy ice. <laughs> wow. Oh, um, look at that. That is. That is an impressive ball there, Gerald David. Um, boom, boom, oops. It's one of the biggest balls I've ever seen. <laughs> boom. Two huge oh, balls. Look at that. That's amazing. Look at that. Oh, it looks even cool with all the... I know, look, look at the smoke coming off. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Boom, so we got that. Kids, don't try this at home. That's right, this is for adults. Adults. Adults only. So, they, did they say put juice of two of these in each one? I, I think we do. I say that it's garnished with an orange wedge, but I'm sure it's um, not going to hurt anything. But I think you do that and then garnish it. That's why there's four. Um, at least that's what I'm going to do. That's how we're going to do it. <laughs> that's um, what we're doing. <laughs> three parts of this. So we learned that three second thing really only works if you have the proper spout, which we do not. The poor spout. Um, so I'm just going to count to three and do this, and count to two and do that one, and count to one and do that one. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm doing these little lights. These are smaller glasses than I think you would typically want. So I don't think we'll have the room to do the full, um, to do the full measure the way you would typically maybe if you had the proper grass. One, two. One, two. Uh, that was a little bit of a strict yeah. one. Yeah, a little, a little bit extra, extra, because, you know, numbers and rules, and there are no rules to numbers. At least that's what everybody else says. So here you go. Oh, shit. And after that. Woo! Boom. Ninja reaction time. Bravo. This is how you clean up a spill. You put a towel on it. Look at me. Mm, I'm special. 
And then if you're like me, you can monkey toe it back up. Oh, oh. I messed it up. Well, you have Boom. socks on. It's harder. That's true, it is. So get this guy all propped up. He's going to sneak up on me. He did. I mean, that'll put it to dirty clothes. <laughs> Well, we know that's extra bubbly, so it gets one part of this guy. So, one one thousand. Because really, just for the fizz, one one thousand. I think you could have done the full measure. I think I probably could have. The, um, then here's the juice of an orange. The juice of an orange. I don't know why, but that made me feel like something in a spell or something. <laughs> Boom, here's another one for this guy. It was guy. very like Viking goth or something, I don't know. But it was very crazy. hocus pocus. <laughs> the juice so here's that. For my little friend. Stir these. And so the ice is important because it really, really want this drink cold. You want your liquor stored, so they're at least chilled. These are so pretty. Like, they this are. looks like something I would totally want on, like, yeah. a sunny day. Like, they're just so bright and so cheerful. I really like that. Something else I'm going to do for presentation purposes. These oranges are quite gargantuan. <laughs> um, so I'm going to cut that down. And we're just going to use this for our garnish for a little bit of a And more if you cut them horizontally, oh, that's right. yeah, through there, that's just going to, it's going to go on there way easier. Boom. I'm just looking Boom. nice. I always wondered how they did that at bars, and I'm like at home trying to like smash one on there. I know, right? Being able to figure out so why it's not this working. Work. Yeah. My bartender's <laughs> a gypsy. Ah. Oh, that looks delicious. That looks. Look at that. Orangey it's and. It's gorgeous. Yeah, that's a pretty one. I don't know if you guys can tell. Da, da, da. We have Cheers five seconds to toast. To cook tails. To cook tails. Mm. And the garnish is important because it delivers the Ooh. smell straight to your nose. That's really good and very cold. That is so refreshing. Like, oh my gosh, that's gonna be my next like What's hot that? day cocktail. Was that the chicken? Yeah, that's the All chicken. Right. Check out what we've got going on. Whew. Uh, it looks a little bit like it needs a little bit longer. So I'm gonna flip it one more time. Just and we to... always go by eye like that. We do. Um, you're supposed to use a thermometer and you stab it in. I think you want it to get 165 or hotter. Google that to verify. I'm gonna set that for another four minutes. I like it. Um, and I do it a little uh, low and slow. If you don't know, you're better off to go low and slow. Um, do it a lower temp. You're less likely to burn it. Um, then use your meat thermometer until you get there. Um, if you go too hot, you can burn the outside crispy mm -hmm. and ruin it before the center is safe to eat. So it's better to go low and slow. That way it might take forever, but you'll get there eventually. Oops, that's me. Almost. Uh, there we go. Uh, and again, oops. like... We don't necessarily recommend this because it can let a lot of the juice out of the meat, but if you're really uncomfortable with whether or not your meat is done, you can make a small incision and just look to see if it's pink, keep cooking it. That meat should not look pink. That's, That's right. kind of the biggest tell as far as visibility. Another thing you can do if you know what cocktail you're going to serve, um, you can make ice cubes out of something that goes in it. Like if you're doing a Long Island iced tea, you can make cocktails out of, or ice cubes out of soda. If you know you're oh, doing something with that's orange based, you can make ice cubes out of orange juice. I even read a recipe today that was talking about freezing edible flowers into ice cubes. So you had flour ice cubes to put in your... Oh, now that's swanky. That that's another really level. Awesome. But we didn't have time to do today. So, all right. So once our chicken comes out in about less than five seconds, um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, throw our kale in there and get that cooking. It does. Uh, smelling all this and and there we go. Freaking our. How do you pronounce this? A party. Um. So a yeah. Aperitif. 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 I think is the way to pronounce. That it. reminds me of uh, Italy. It does. I like all the Italian, and it's making me reminiscent. <laughs> Uh, let's check on this chicken. Joel David actually did a three month back packing trip through Italy um, a while ago. Um, it was through like a lot of Europe, but the most time was in Italy. And this reminds me of when I was in Milan. Really just, uh, not in Milan, Murano. Yeah, the island of Milan, where the Murano glass comes from. Um, we were out there and I was eating at this little restaurant. I'll never forget it either. Because um, the waitress comes up and she's like this and she mumbles some like Italian cuss word that I didn't know at the time. Someone else chimed me into it. And I was like, what do you mean? And she points through the window. And you can see this guy set up. And it looks like he has a little tiny jukebox and these weird little dolls and they're dancing. And I'm like, what? What's wrong with him selling his wares? She's like, no. You give that man 40 euros and by the time you get home, you give him to a gift to your kid and all it is is a paper doll. You know what I mean? He has this like very, very, almost invisible to the naked eye thread going from the jukebox attached to some type of little mechanism that shakes it. So this little paper doll looks like a little dancing doll. 
and you're all amazed because it's so thin and paper-like. And of course, he hands you a prepackaged one. And before you know it, you know, he's gone. And you're out your 40 euro. And I'll never forget that. Always have your guard up. You know, that was in the island of Murano, um, which is right off of uh, Venice. You know, the island oh, of all wow. the boats and gondolas. And it was just beautiful. And beautiful. And like, the Italians will look out for you, too. You know, it's one of those things. Um, don't let it deter you, but you definitely got to have your big city hat on. Oh, those are looking good. I'm going to give them about another minute. Really? Okay. Italy was fun. There's a lot of ghost stories told once you're up in that region. They had some weird, uh, I guess it's an old prison. Um, that I guess certain people use as like a base and all this stuff. And so they have all these ghost stories where they pretty much Scooby-Doo people and make you think it was ghosts just so you didn't come around kind oh, of thing. fantastic. Oh, I man, Norman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you meddling kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. That is really refreshing. And I see what they mean. This needs to be cold. Yeah. I actually sure. see what they mean. It needs to be cold. That is delicious, though. Uh, and we had nice. never tried very Pep nice. at all before tonight, so this has been mm -hmm. like a super new experience for us. Like, and it's, yes. this is so good. Like, I totally recommend it. That's yummy. That is yummy. I'm gonna start because well, we're getting pretty close here. Yeah. I'm gonna put these guys away. Do you want to top that guy off with your Absolutely. special? Absolutely. Thank you. No, not that. <laughs> I'm gonna show him your special kitty. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> so Gerald David got me this in honor of my being kitty. And this, That's is right, a, <laughs> this is a oh. cork stop or a champagne stop that just goes in the top because you can't reuse the cork from a champagne to stop it up. It also works in wine bottles. So this is my special kitty cork. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up now. Yummy, 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 yummy. So we're setting the chicken to the side. What we do next is the kale, right? Yes, kale is next. Scrape up some of this for the fond. We're going to leave this. We're going to use this. Do we add any water or anything? Um, let me double check, but I don't think so. So, we're going to add the chopped garlic and any olive oil oh. we need to, just a drizzle. And then we're going to cook stirring constantly for 30 seconds to a minute. Set that timer and the garlic's in. Alright. Oh, this is a good going out a minute. I like garlic. I'm going to stir that constantly. We need a little bit more oil because this is almost a dry Yeah, pan. for sure. And after that minute, then we're going to add the chopped kale, and we're going to go for two to three more minutes. you got to stir it constantly, otherwise you lose your fawn. It just turns into a giant burnt mess. It also super helps you get the stuff off the pan. It does. Like, that is the most helpful thing to pre-cleaning, is to get all of that into the sauce. Yeah. Like, it's so delicious and super helpful with cleaning. So, and super. That's a, and, that's a, and that's a trick, too, when you're cleaning. You can put water in your pan and get it back boiling, and that will help you scrub. Oops. So that is our garlic. Um, now we're going to add our kale. Add the kale. I'm um, grabbing this and I'm right behind you. We, uh, Ooh, that looks so good. Put this back actually in here. Mm -hmm. um, all right, yeah, add it I in. definitely want to eat that. We're going to get our kale in there. And we are going to add some water with the kale in a minute so that'll help um, release that garlic paste a little bit that you saw in there. And I'm pretty much stirring it to coat with the oil. And it will want a little salt and pepper as well. So we've got three minutes in there. And um, yeah, like always, add salt and pepper if desired. Obviously, David is desiring some mm -hmm. additional salt and pepper there. Especially with the kale. Yeah, for sure. It's not going to hurt it. No, to me, the salt kind of makes it. I just love kale. Like, I can I eat kale too. plain um, once it's wilted or whatever. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, once it's with a little bit of lemon. Don't we usually put some lemon on this too or no? Yes, usually we do some lemon on there. And we have some, so uh, I think that's going to go on at the end as a garnish. So basically, we're just waiting on this kale, um, and then that's we're right. going to put everything together. It's going to be delicious. So I'd like to propose another cheers. Ooh, to getting it done. Oh, wait, wait, we got we to gotta give the man his oh, job. Yeah, uh, yes. Mix the mixer. We don't want to put the man out of a job. We don't want to put nobody out of a job. That's for sure, especially during these times. Beautiful. Where did I not put this on? Oh, yeah. I think it was not on the uh, yeah, let's see. The Aperol. Aperol? I can't even I don't know. I looked word. it up. I looked it up on Google and had it pronounced it for me multiple times. It directed me to a YouTube channel. So I'm doing my best here, guys. That's right. Doing our best. Doing, doing our my best. best. All right, now we've returned. Cheers. What are we choosing? We're choosing you. Oh, I love you. Awesome. Well, I love you. Thank you. Mm. So nice. Love is reciprocal. Were we supposed to chop up those peppers? I feel like maybe we were. 
Probably. What would they go into? I thought they went into the kale. Interestingly enough, we're not going to talk about those. What's it say? Does it just go whole, whole into the kale? I guess so. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, show this guy some more. Kale, we're going to add the roasted sweet potatoes and peppers and then stir them up. But it never does say to do anything with the peppers. Yeah, no, yeah. Awesome. They do that sometimes. Now, would you add the potatoes while it's in here? No. What and do we have? Healthy heat. So we're going to cook this for two to three minutes. We've got about 50 seconds left on that. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to add some water, okay. a quarter cup, and that's, that's not to form a sauce, that's just to steam it. So you're going to add like about mm -hmm. a quarter cup um, and the juice of the remaining two lemon wedges. Then we're going to cook stirring and scraping any fond up for about two to three more minutes. So again, we have one cup measure that has all of the, um, yep. like one fourth, two thirds, et cetera, delineated on it. So Gerald David is using one. it for the one fourth the cup. Yeah, the bottom one. The, um, can I go ahead and put that in or should I wait the whole minute? It looks like uh, it's about ready. It's got 15 seconds left. I don't think it matters, honestly. Should I cap it off? Yeah, I would. I think that's a good idea. Trap that steam really it steam a little it. Bit more. And kale, like, you can feel it when you get it. If it's, like, pretty, um, pretty stout, you might want to steam it. Whereas if it's um, if it's a little bit softer, that might not be necessary. You might not want to put the lid on. You might just want to let that water kind of evaporate as opposed to trapping it in there and steaming it a little bit. But I do, I do kind of burp it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do burp some of it out. And we like our vegetables to have a little integrity to mm -hmm. them and not just be mush. So we're not trying to get this too soft or anything, but um, yeah, it, it does not. tend to go really well when we add the lid for a little bit. It'll turn out fantastic. Look at the giant know. orange, giant oranges. <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Like it's so bright and sunny, mm -hmm. like such a bright and sunny cocktail. I like it. I like it. I don't think I've ever even had this before. And the ice adds panache. For sure. Oh, it does charm and classiness, which panache is a fancy word for classy, which I guess if you're trying to be bougie, you should start speaking bougie, right? I like that. I wasn't trying to be bougie, but I like that I'm word. Like, I'm a big fan of uh, bougie things. I have been called bougie. So we've got two minutes on this. Yeah. Uh, let's check this guy out. I'm not going to take the top off. And we are going to stir that some, because like, really, that's what it says to do. You want to make sure you're getting all that fond and everything. That's still pretty wet, so nothing is sticking, nothing is like in danger of whatever. Yeah, that's true. Um, so strength's not like super necessary, but... And at this point, I'm going to leave the top off and just let it do its gig. When the top is on, it's going to form more condensation, so it's mm. not going to get as dry as quickly. It's going to steam it more. Once you take that top off, the water is just kind of evaporating mm. out, um, and it's going to get drier quicker. And quicker. Which is what you kind of want. And it's a little game. I'm also kind of experimenting to yeah. see what works out the best. I love kale. We've cooked it a lot. So it's one of those things we like to play with a little bit, um, see what really opens up to it. When people make fun of kale, they really should. Because once you try it, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt, you're going to love it. It's amazing. And I also, um, for people who are like vegetarian, pescatarian, may not get iron from like the traditional sources oh, yep. as much as others. Yep. Like it does have a lot of iron in it. All dark greens do, so like collard greens, kale, all of that. The less you cook them, um, kind of the more nutrients they retain. So just the thought there, um, but they are a great source of iron for people who don't get it from the traditional sources. That looks delicious. It is. It's really good. And kale puts down close. a lot. So if you put like a bunch it in there thinking like, oh my gosh, this is so much, like, no, trust me, it's not going to be nearly as much as you thought yeah. going you're in gonna be fine. if you're a novice. You're going to be fine. Mm. And then once you start eating it, you'll just feel like, I wish I had more. So That's right. <laughs> That's right. Especially with that lemon. Lemon is key. Like, seriously. On broccoli, too. I and I is. love broccoli, but, like, lemon makes all the difference. Yeah, and we were supposed to, when we did that fourth cup of water, we were supposed to do the juice of the lemons. This is us slipping. Oh, that's true. This is us slipping. Not that it matters, because the lemon was no. getting on there one way or another. And, in fact, I like the lemon to be a dominant flavor. Um, so putting it on later lets uh, less of it cook off, which means you're going to get more of that lemon flavor. And there is one seed we just heard bounce in there. Yep. I don't know if y'all could hear it, but I could. Um, so you definitely want to get anything like that out, like Gerald yeah, David we're did. Fishing it out right now. Just so so nobody loses a tooth. You throw in your backyard, maybe you get a lemon tree out of it. it Would be a bad or a deal. Lemon bush. I've also heard lemon bush. I don't know. Oh yeah, I think we we'll do both. I don't. Yeah. So I'm gonna stir this a little bit just to kind of get that coated. All right. And then After so now that. I'm turning the heat off. You said now add the potatoes to it with the heat off. To the bowl of cooked kale, add the roasted sweet potato and peppers, season with salt and pepper, talk to combine. So really you want to put them all in a big bowl. I don't know that you want to put now them in I'm going to do it on this because I don't okay. have a big bowl. 
Um, and here's the little peppers, boom. And I also want the heat from the peppers to hit a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's um, good. Do this. Will you do me some salt and pepper while we do this? Yeah. yeah sure. That's something we can kind of multitask a little bit. So we'll get the salt and pepper here. Get some oh, salt. Perfect. Yummy, yummy. Uh, Fresh more ground. Than to do. Fresh ground pepper. So delicious. I've told you all about my pepper obsession. And we love pepper, so we do it up on pepper. <laughs> you may not want as much pepper as we be doing. So we do it. All right, now I'm gonna add the potatoes. Yep, absolutely. Stir that all together. Now I grab this with my bare hand, but I don't know what your situation is. Just use a thing. Don't People who cook right a lot hand. have less sensitivity uh, typically. Well, and your thing may not cool as fast as mine either. Um, Very true. So just you know, always test it first. Yeah, to make don't sure assume that you're yours not, is cool yeah. just because I knew mine was. It's like movie magic. Oh, look at that. Exactly. So. Oh, that's beautiful. Fantastic. I love the colors. I want to kind of break that's this pretty. leaf down, but. Yeah, we didn't really tear them up after we tore them off. There we go. Perfect. I'm just kind of chopping up some of the longer pieces. See, and again, like we didn't tear them up at the beginning, but like obviously it's totally fine that we're oh, doing yeah. it now. So you can oh, kind of dish it. Again. Gorgeous. I was going to play it over here instead of over there, so I was just like trying to move. It was just weird. Super, super weird. Oh, this smells so good. Again, the only time you want smell o vision is right here, right now. Yeah, for sure. Boom. Oops, 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 oops. It's running away on me. Boom. That guy right there. Boom. All right. Now, for the almighty tahiti sauce. Oh, my gosh. Bam. My favorite part, y'all. No joke. And mm. I love kale, but this stuff is so good. Stir it a little bit. Get it kind of fresh and good. Fresh and good. I might have tried a tiny bit earlier when y'all were <laughs> and it's incredible. There's that guy. And Gerald David's so funny. He always knows, like, if there's additional sauce, like... Oh, yeah. She, she gets way. it. She gets it. <laughs> and it's not because I'm mean. He doesn't like sauce <laughs> like I do. Like, he no, that's true. Care. I like he wants less. I want more. Sauce. It works Bikino out. Sauce. The, um, that right there. All right, this is it, y'all. Look how delicious that guy turned out. Uh, so I can just check a thing real quick. Yeah, perfect. Look at this. Tahini covered chicken and kale with... Um, with uh, pickled peppers and roasted sweet potatoes. Wow, 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 wow. Mission accomplished. Look what we did. It's a thing. <laughs> you can eat it. Absolutely. Um, I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Cooktails. Don't play with it.